Apple, he, he brought me to a windy Welsh hillside with a black cloud threatening to soak us any minute. But you promised me something hot this week. I've got something very hot. Three very hot little hatches, actually. Yeah, but what, what's he doing here? What have you got against Ryan? Look, he's young, he's a racing driver, he's got quite an attractive girlfriend. <laughs> well, that's true, but Ryan, can we trouble you for a second and yeah. to join us? Yeah, come on, if you go work, you've got to work, son. And I'm going to introduce these cars. Hello, Let's Ryan. see you again, Hello. Ryan. Hello, Hello. Again. Great. We have got today... You ruined that Rolls-Royce piece we did. His hair didn't suit a Rolls-Royce. <laughs> <laughs> but Rolls-Royce want the younger generation yeah, right. anyway. Okay. So anyway, forget that. We're talking today about hot hatches and we've got the BMW M140i, the Golf R that everybody has been talking about on our channel, and the wonderful looking RS3 Audi. But they're all German. Where's the Focus RS for Britain to beat them off? That's a good point, but there was a little bit of a problem with the Focus RS from Ford and I hasten to add it wasn't mechanical, but uh, <laughs> so we've had to... Um, we had to Because I wanted improvise. to drive that again. You know, we did that little test with the RS and people all said I hadn't switched all the right <laughs> switches off to get the complete drift. Probably didn't. I, did, <laughs> I still think I did do it correctly because it drifts a little bit. I mean, Ryan, he's a racing driver. I can talk to a racing driver. He is useful sometimes. You wouldn't know anything about this. You know, Ryan, it's sort of... Don't worry, Tiff, we'll get you one soon. We want you to drive the Focus RS, so we'll okay. get you one soon. All right, so today it's an all German hot hatch match. It is indeed, and I think as Jana is in the BMW, you should go in the M140i. Yep. I think you'll enjoy that, Ryan. This car, people have spoke about this car more than any other, so I'm quite excited to drive the Golf R. Okay, so well, well, I'm quite Tiff, happy blue with eyes, That's blue right. car, yeah. RS3 for you, okay? I'll take so, the Audi. I'll, I'll take it easy, guys. I'll, <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll do it for. Uh, what's that on the back of <laughs> What is that on the back of your Golf? I was hoping you wouldn't notice. You've got an extension was, on it. I was hoping you wouldn't notice. Okay, so it's a Golf uh, Estate. I, I kind of left the small print out. Let's go. It's a, the thing we got to worry about is not the estate, is the weather. Rain. Apparently the forecast is pretty, pretty bad. Volkswagen Golf R. So this is the estate version. There was a bit of a problem with us getting the three door or five door. So we got the estate version, 310 horsepower, 064.8 seconds, so it's no slouch. We had so many comments about the Golf R, people saying that we should be reviewing the Golf R. It's so special, it's so amazing, the best of the hot hatches. But I have to say, first impressions are, it's not a particularly exciting cockpit to be in. Maybe I was expecting a little bit more. Got lovely sports seats, lovely Alcantara here as well. Yes, I do like Alcantara. And one thing I really like about this car, it's got the, the God gesture, where you just ah, put your hand up and it unlocks your infotainment system. And I'm gonna change my mode. I'm gonna put it in race mode, even though the weather's awful. Still keeps the four-wheel drive. It just firms up a little bit, makes those gear shifts a little bit more sporty as well. If I was gonna do a list, of what a hot hatch should have, this 140i would tick most boxes. A three liter engine, perfect for the power to weight ratio in a hot hatch. Six cylinder engine, just sounds unbelievable. It, it, it really has a nice pop when you change gear. And of course, rear wheel drive. Rear wheel drive, in my opinion, will always put a smile on your face. It's the purest driving form. The top of Audi's hot hatch range, this RS3, Fastback is of course quite a bit more expensive than those other two. It starts at what forty-three and a half thousand pounds, but like so many cars nowadays, it quickly rises when you add a few extras. And this car I'm sitting in has got another seven hundred pounds for the paint job, seven hundred pounds for these Napa leather seats, seven hundred pounds for some snazzy rims, an extra nine hundred pounds for LED headlamps, another thousand pounds for a comfort sport pack, a thousand pounds for that sports exhaust, and a thousand pounds for this sport suspension. I'm not mentioning the 630 pounds delivery charge with half a tank of fuel and number plates included. Raising the price by nearly 10,000 pounds. This car I'm actually in is a 53 and a half thousand pound car 
but at least I'm sitting in this luxurious Napa leather and very much enjoying the sound and power delivery of this engine 400 horsepower European horsepower which is about I don't know 387 brake horsepower for those that really worry about these things PS to be precise you know what the car's good but I was just expecting a little bit more it just feels I hate to say it, but it feels a little bit cheap inside I was brought up with the Golf GTI era and the Volkswagen's being so solid and of course they're dependable but it just it's not really what I thought it was going to be I don't know why for 35 36 grand as the MSRP it's not a cheap car the other two guys Tiff and Paul tried a Focus RS which had drift mode but it put power to the front wheels. This BMW is the only hot hatch with just rear wheel drive, no driving assist to the front tires, which for anyone who wants to be pure driving, if you just want to have fun, this is the car to have. Just listen. It's absolutely amazing. Nice paddles in the right place on the steering wheel. I don't like the chopped off bottom. So when you come to turning around quickly you suddenly miss the bit at the top and this one's got nice Alcantara then smooth leather and it, it's just about three different bits of the steering wheel all in one. It's a funny contrast really sound it's very condensed in this console with almost too much information. I've got so many different readouts and digits to look at in fact it took me about five minutes to find where the clock was. Look at the traction. <laughs> that, now that's surprising that is amazing. And the turn in is very precise. Even though it's in the stiffest suspension, takes the bumps well, engine comes alive. I tell you, this is more sporty than I expected this RS3 to do. How do you often get very criticised for not having that much driver feedback? They'll be interested when I try the other two, but right now, this is putting the smile on my face. What a difference this car is over the Volkswagen Golf R. The BMW feels much more solid, but it also feels, as it should, feels a lot twitchier on these roads because you haven't got the luxury of that all-wheel drive that I like and a lot of people don't like, but I have to say there is something about just getting that feel of the car moving and sliding. <laughs> there is something about a real drive car on then to the Golf Estate R. We've gone from two and a half litres and five cylinders to two litres and four cylinders. We've dropped from 400 horsepower down to 310. The least powerful of these three cars by quite a margin. We've also got an extra 80 kilograms to carry around thanks to that estate car. So whereas the uh, Audi got to 62 in what, 4.1 seconds, and you could get to 62 in the Golf R in 4.6 seconds, but with this extra 80 kilos, it's 4.8 seconds. Quite a throaty roar. But interior-wise, whilst I could play the Audi was a bit too fussy, this Volkswagen looked a bit too simple. Big dials big numbers easy to read so if I was going to be ultra critical about the BMW I would say I would like to see a bit of a revamp in the interior I drove the new M5 recently and that just felt really special really modern really new inside whereas this still feels like it's from a older era should we say and I just wish I wish BMW would have more of a noise more of a grunt with regards to the, the exhaust not in your face AMG there's a place for that and Mercedes do that so beautifully well but just just a bit of a balance I just think this could you know, it's, a, it's a very special car it's a little sports car why shouldn't it sound just that little tiny bit better 
famous four motion four wheel drive. But it's amazing how you lose that punch out of the corners the Audi had with that extra power. I never thought the Audi would be more sporty than this. It's, it's more softly sprung. Of course, the Audi had that competition suspension pack. It wasn't the standard base spec. Yet yeah, this has also got a sports pack. Sorry, Golf, I'm disappointed. I'm disappointed. Audi RS3, by far the most powerful car, by far the most expensive car as well. Audi, for me, are absolutely nailing it at the moment with their cars. I think the ergonomics of the car, the look, the feel, it just, they feel special. This feels special. Look, it should be special. It's considerably more money than the other two cars we got on test today, but you really notice it as well. It's really funny because what I think is nice other people don't. Tiff will say, I guarantee he'll say that this steering wheel's hard. It's very hard with little padding, so whilst I like the grip of the thumbs, it's very firm on the palm of your hands. But a steering wheel, of course it's hard. What's it going to be, made of Play-Doh or something? So into the BMW, and we've moved from two and a half litres to two litres. Now this famous three litre straight six BMW engine. And in fact, this is the cheapest of the three cars we're testing today. Although the starting price is almost identical to Volkswagen, there's less options on this BMW, which is quite funny when you think that this brand is renowned in the past for being the one with the most options to be added. And sitting in front of me has to be the nicest dashboard layout of the three. So I've got the same binnacle, but much less fuss and information inside it compared to the Audi. Two nice dials close together, proper needles, rev counter, speedo, and very little else. Whereas the switch gear has a nice quality across the center, big wide sat nav screen, a nice little touch of aluminium trim. In the Golf, the original hot hatchback. Volkswagen, in my opinion, are the creators of the hot hatchback. It's a nice car. It just, for me, doesn't quite cut it with the other two. The weather's terrible today and I'm not smiling. I was smiling in the other cars. I'm not I'm smiling because of the weather, but I don't have a smile on my face when I drive this car. It doesn't really have the punch. It doesn't have the initial throttle response, even when we're in race mode. This sounds and feels so much racier than the other cars, but it just feels much more agile, really nimble. Even on these wet and greasy roads, this car just feels so capable. It feels with a huge amount of confidence. But of course, what I like most about the BMW, it's got a round steering wheel, and it's all the same texture, one nice leather feel, whichever part of it you grab hold of. It's such a little thing, I know, but it just drives me mad when I'm turning tight circles. I shouldn't get so upset about these little things. Of course, these wet conditions today are really playing into the hands of the two four-wheel drive cars, because that, no doubt, the traction works well. It doesn't like these fidgety, undulating roads as much as the two four-wheel drive cars do in these wet conditions. And yet the grip is still there, well, the power is good, the sound quality not as good. Comfort and luxury on the inside I think is the best of the three. The question is, what do the other two think? Lads. <laughs> I'm absolutely exhausted. <laughs> Day one was a bit oh, look, interesting. Now, it's a beautiful evening in Wales, but I've never filmed in such rain, rain. I'm glad I'm not a cameraman, that's all I can say. The rain was horizontal all day long. Ryan, thoughts on the car's first day? Yeah, so the Golf R for me was not so good, in yeah. my opinion. 
I'm, now, I'm glad you said that, <laughs> because I thought that would be the Wiz Kids car. I was disappointed in the mm, Golf R. I have to say, me too. Everyone's raved about it. I was it. expecting so much more. All those yeah. comments on our feed and videos it was saying interior. Golf R, Golf R yeah. for the win. And the dials and the switch gear was lower rate. I just think it needs 40 brake horsepower more, then it will be a bit more fun. I just felt like there wasn't enough grunt in the car. Good engine tow. It had a bit of a, you know, mm -hmm. good engine tow, but nothing, tow. No. nothing there. It was, yeah. Look, it, it was, was solid, it was reliable. Yeah. Maybe the hatchback, we should give it the benefit of the doubt, maybe the hatchback will just feel that little bit more special. Well, it's 80, 80 kilos, kilos like, yeah, but that's not that much. No, it's not much. Okay, uh, so Volkswagen did, what about the Audi then? I couldn't stop smiling when I drove this car, which says it all. Yeah, but it's another I... 10,000 pounds. You've got to remember that's at another least, 10, at least when you spec it up thousand pounds. When you spec it up a bit closer, I mean, it's got 20, sports 000. exhaust, it's got a sports suspension pack, it's got all the gizmos. I agree with, I agree. Yeah. It was fantastic handling, but I, the dash, I'm slightly... But when you drive this and then you drive that, it's... Oh, the it's, dash is amazing. Yeah. The dash too is, much. There was too much. Well. Fantastic. The dash and yeah. the wheel. The, and and the, the wheel's wheel. great. The wheel's great. It's got a chopped off bottom. That's what you want. It's got... <laughs> it's got... <laughs> it's really hard. Chopped off hard bottom. Hard on the hands. Hard Ryan, on the hands. Ryan. Yeah, I think BMW have pretty much got the driver's car sorted out. It's rear wheel drive. It's got the rev counter and the speedo. That's all you need. You don't need MP. It felt a little bit twitchy on those roads today. It, was it very felt very twitchy. Very wet. <laughs> very wet. But it's fine. It gives you. A, it puts a smile on your face as yeah. well. That car put a smile on my face. That car definitely put a smile on my face. The Golf I wanted so, more. First, second, third. Yeah. Quickly. End of day one. First, second, third. First. First. Second. Third. Same. And well, drum roll. <laughs> <laughs> well, Interior what? They're first equal because the Audi was better as a performance vehicle, but I felt the BMW interior was classier, a nicer wow. dashboard layer, a round steering wheel of one texture. So I'd put them first equal on the road, giving away the 10 grand. I mean, the Audi's probably the winner, but you've got to yeah, take a few points away because yeah. it's 10 grand more. You can maybe knock off a few extras and keep it. But just the Golf was just, I was really disappointed with the Golf. Because oh, Audi's got a bad reputation not having good steering feel. Yeah. You know, I actually thought no, I that had feel, great feel. Yeah, really good. Yeah. Anyway, so have you got anything? Guys, we, want to, we want to go fast. They're hot hatches. What's the plan You know tomorrow? what I've done? I think I've managed to pull off something pretty special tomorrow. And instead of just driving these cars on the road, we've managed to get a track. So you guys and me, we can have some fun and see what the hot hatches are really Sorry. like on the track. I think you ought to buy these camera people a beer because they got soaked. <laughs> we were sitting in those cars nice and warm. I think you ought to buy them a beer I've now. I've never seen such wet cameramen in my whole life. It's eight o'clock and they're still Let's filming. Go. Beer time.